and welcome back to another edition of the Change My Mind podcast. I won't change my mind because I don't have to because I'm an American. I won't change yes. my mind. Oh, uh, I got it on loop track there. Wow. That, was, that was my mistake here. I am Wesley Sykes through the other side of the ether is the Dalton to my Wade Garrett. Although maybe that should be flipped around given previous conversations here. It's Mr. Nicholas J. Esk Fryer. Cooler for higher. I uh, I assumed it was just like an age thing, as much as we don't have that much of an age gap. But uh, that was that was my thought behind it. But uh, you know, uh, given how much you love Wade Garrett, I, I probably should have switched that around last minute. There, I will say that if we had um, uh, what was his? I know his last name's Wesley, so it kind of doesn't kind of Brad works. Brad Wesley. Brad. I know if we had a Brad Wesley in our life, and then he pulled the Wade, what he did to Wade Garrett to you, then I would avenge you. I hope so. Yeah, that would that would be very nice. Although, you know, Brad Garrett or Brad Garrett, that, now that's a character from a completely different sitcom there, or, or an actor from a completely <laughs> yes. different sitcom. Yes. Uh, but Brad Wesley, pretty good bad guy, pretty good smug millionaire there. But we'll get to all of that. Yes, quite smug. He reminded me very much of um, the guy from um, the first it, 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 Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like, he, he reminds mm-hmm. me of that bad guy. I, I, I have to remind myself it's that's not him. Everything. Well, I heard uh, that the actor Ben Gazzara is the rich financier in um, oh oh like why, why, the Big Lebowski. Oh, and, and the Coen Brothers were essentially like just do Brad Wesley, but in like an older form. Huh? Yeah. I yeah. Wow. So. I I honestly have only seen the Big Lebowski once in my life. I think it was like this. It was on a bus uh, for a trip for college. Ah, okay. I've seen it a couple times. I'm not a huge Big Lebowski fan. I, I think it's a fine movie, but some people think it's like the best movie of all time. I, I'm not there. It's a good movie. It's a fun movie. I've seen seen some really random movies on fucking road trips. Between this, this <laughs> Big Lebowski, and then Pool Hall Junkies. That those are like the oh, ones that jump. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't. That's with is that with Tom Cruise and Paul Newman? Uh, no, no. It's like random people mm. that I. Mm. <sighs> Is walking in that? There's it's a it's an odd bunch. That that's that's for damn sure. I, I like, okay. But anyways, it's, it's not one I would uh I had a fun time, but I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. If you're on a bus traveling to a Big Ten school for a, a weekend home and home, uh, maybe pop that on. Yeah, there you go. That's mm-hmm. about there you go. That's your specific situation. You could maybe Northwestern can watch that on the road back from uh, UConn. Oh, there we go. Because it's March Madness. Yes. <laughs> You came ready to play today, didn't you? Uh, that was just in there. I haven't gotten rid of that, actually. That's that's mostly due to laziness and my inability to clean things up there. But it came in handy for this time. Uh, and exactly. And without further ado, this week, uh, Court is back in session, actually. As we dust off the gavel to conduct an original versus sequel debate around the movies, plural, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. There we go. <laughs> Got plenty of sounders to play with today. But uh, before that, Nick, have you ever been involved in a ball bar room altercation? Wow. Ballroom, bar yes. Ballroom bar altercation, fight. but not a not a not a bar room altercation. Mm, a bar room altercation. Damn yes. it! Uh, no, but either way, I have not. No, I've, I've not been in any uh, fist fights at a bar. Have you? You ever had to pull someone off? You know, a buddy off another dude or something like that, or I, break something up? Or? I feel like I had I've had the cool. Now that we're talking about, I feel like I've had to cool a buddy down or two mm-hmm, before, mm-hmm. but never, um, never an altercation. No, uh, not not no, no. I'm not. How, how about you? Um, I've been into. I've been kicked out of a bar. Uh, I wouldn't call it a fight. It's it's an altercation. This was actually the first first time I ever went on. Uh, uh, an online date. Yeah. I met oh. a girl online. This was on, I think I was on OK Cupid. I'm not even sure if it was like Tinder or anything like that yet. Uh, and we went out to this like really fratty bar in, in Midtown Murray Hill area where they have uh beer pong, like in the bar that you can sign up for and play girl wants to play. We play. Uh, and it's just like th- these two huge dudes on the other side and they absolutely work us. The girl can't play yeah, at all. She's just not very good. So I'm carrying the team. We lose. Um, and I, and I I'm already pretty drunk at this point and I s- walk up to him and say something, but I, I don't remember it being, um, that bad or like, I think, I think I thought of it as like more playful than anything. And he either pushes me or throws like, like smashes the beer out of my hand. 
Um, and at that point, I, all these people are around me, and I hear like the ooh, and I you know realize I got the girl uh, wait, behind wait. me as well. Good, but they actually did the ooh. Uh, I can feel people kind of like starting to form a circle type okay. thing. You know, not okay. like ooh, not maybe not like ooh, like like actually in the movies, but I can feel like the the murmuring of people realizing this, and I'm sure. like, all right, I got to go because this this guy is like you know bigger than me, and I'm not that big of a guy. But um, so I go up and I push him, and he takes a couple steps back and hits his head on the t- TV that's hanging you know up up on the ceiling there. Ooh. So then he so he's kind of like rubbing his head, and then. Before he can respond, because he would have whooped my ass easily, the bartender, you know, kind of grabs me up by my arms and drags me out. The girl leaves uh, <laughs> almost immediately, um, and I go to the I go to the bouncer. I'm like, "Hey, man, uh, I appreciate that. This th- that wasn't going to end well for me." He goes, "No problem." I go, "Can you grab my uh, my my debit card and close up my bill for me? I'll be out of your way." So he does that, uh, and that was that. Wow, sounds yeah. like you handled that really well. I, I guess so. I bet as well as you could, you know, but you got to kind of show up for yourself. And then, um, mm-hmm. but I, I thank God for that bouncer because I, <laughs> I would have gotten a black eye or a bloody nose or something. Yeah. I, I remember when I was working at the gym, I had a client who was like a UFC guy and, and his son did like MMA stuff. And I remember him like, I, I've like no experience fighting at all. And uh, I remember him like showing me some stuff and it was like, you know, just some like some pretty tough stuff. And, uh, I remember him saying though, like, if you're ever like in an actual bar fight, though, like, just walk away. Like, there's because there's no rules. It's not like MMA. Yeah. Like, you you have no idea what you're what anybody can do. And I mean, I think the movie were the movies we're talking about today kind of prove that to be the case. Yeah, exactly. It could be a glass over the head, beer bottle over the head. You know, who a knife knows, in the boot. Right? Someone, yeah, knife in the boot, right boot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guy's got good eyes there. You know, good, yes, good on Swayze. Um. But yeah, so that's that's interesting. So no no barroom fights, not not even college, no no uh, squabbles with the baseball team and fraternities oh, or uh, football. Uh, there was there were okay. Now now that you're saying that, I feel like there were there was never a fight that I was a part of. But I remember there being moments. I remember there being moments where it was like kind of testy, but never like it would be at a house, never like out mm, at a bar. Because yeah, because it, yeah. then it's kind of like you're keep you're keeping it to ourselves. You know what I mean? We don't want to. Anybody yeah. get into real trouble. If you get hurt, that's on you. But if you the but, bar is gonna call the cops, and then that's a whole different issue, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I uh I, I do remember there was one time, like I was a I think it was freshman year. I think I mentioned this to you before. We have this one day where we like are actually like a college campus, like we're, we're it's kind of nuts and everything. I th- maybe it was sophomore year, I don't know, but I was walking with my my then my college girlfriend and um somebody said something walking by. So it was just her and I, and it was like these three other guys. And I can't remember what they said, but I like I I turned around and I I saw red like I've never seen it before. But thankfully, I uh, I am one to listen to uh, the women in my life, and she <laughs> she stopped me and she, like right away, and she was like, "What do they have to lose? Then what do you have to lose?" And I was like, "All right, fine." Like just a little bit of logic is all it took. But I was uh, that was the closest that I remember like personally to to ever start something like that. Yeah, that's that's good on you, man. I'm not sure if I would have re- been able to reason at that point in time. Well, well, it probably like didn't hurt that I was right. Like it was just me and her. Like if I had one of my ah, uh, that's true. That's a good point. That might have stopped me, but I, I tend to, to usually uh, when I tend to run hot, I feel like I always have somebody right near me who's like ready to to calm me down. I don't know why, but it, I, I feel like I've been very lucky with that. Well, it's it's the quiet ones that you got to worry about with that with that rage that it's kind of boiling under. You know, you, you could turn into like Ralphie in a Christmas story real quick. Yeah, I have like I have like an old teammate who used to be like, if if Fryer's pissed, then like you know then that like something's really wrong. So like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I guess that's I guess I kind of give because I'm not a quiet one. I mean, you know that I, when I get going, like I don't shut up. But. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're you're pretty mild mannered, so to, to get you off tilter like that, you know, yeah. it, it's got to be a good reason. Yeah, so that Those must, fuckers uh, deserved it. You should have whooped their ass. I, I, I wish I. Part of me wishes I did, but I can't <laughs> remember what it was for. So I guess it couldn't have been that important. <laughs> well, you know, it's always important, Nick. Your comic no? book minute. Ooh, huh? Ah, a superb choice. Look at you. That was beautiful. Now, uh, this week there are plenty of comics coming out, but this is a particularly big week. Over at Image, I'll tell you why in a second. But first, I do want to note, if you like the X-Men 97 cartoon, I know Wes and I are going to talk about it a little bit later in the Discharge Depot. Spoiler, mm-hmm. 
but the first issue of the X-Men 97 comic is coming out this week. I will be checking it out. Haven't checked on it yet. I will report back on TLDR for sure. And if you want more, there's also the X-Men 92 comic, which doesn't pick up where this story is picking up, but it's like, it's a, it's a separate story that wasn't in the, um, wasn't in the cartoon. It's collected, I believe in two volumes right now. And it's very accessible for like, not a, I, I don't know if I'd say like a, a kid reader, but like a young adult reader. And if you just love the, like the comics as a kid, it kind of has that same, very much the same art style and a similar vibe. So X Men ninety seven issue one out this. Week. So quick question on that. Maybe this is for my novice comic book brain here, but the X Men ninety seven show is working in storylines from previous comics, right? We we know that much to be yes. true. So what is this? I know you said you haven't read it yet. Do you know like what it's going to be about or like a synopsis of it? I wouldn't be stunned if it's trying to bridge the gap in some capacity from like what happened previously, like gotcha. what, you know, with X-Men. Because like we know what happened, but there's still quite a bit, quite a bit of time between the two. So I'm sure there's like room there. Maybe it's some side missions. I, there's a, a few different directions that I can go in, but I, I, I don't know it for sure. I am definitely like kind of talking out of my ass, but um, I think well, yeah, and it wouldn't give away anything from the, the show. No, that's, yeah. that's for sure. Like that, that actually is an important question. That that's true. It won't give anything away from the show, but it may kind of lay some groundwork for, um, for, for some of what's, what's going on there. But yeah, I will definitely report back on that yeah, on TLDR once I've read it. Um, and then on, uh, from the image front, I mentioned big week for image. We got the final issue of the dead lucky, which is issue 12 there, but we're going to see more of that character at some point in the massiverse. We got the first issue of feral, uh, which is basically mm -hmm. like, uh, 28 days later, but with like, like, but like cats. Kind of like the the the, the creators of oh. the series they did they already did a, a story that was like um that. Silence of the Lambs meets All Dogs Go to Heaven that was Stray Dogs which was awesome like I I, I that was a five issue story that was great and then they've kind of taken that and then they've, they're doing a, a horror story but with cats so it's basically like instead of it being zombies it's rabies so that's mm, kind of the, the twist there interesting okay. Yep. Right. So we, we actually talked to the writer of that series a little while back on TLDR. Then we also got Philadelphia 34. That had been on a slight pause in this arc, um, but one of the best horror comics, one of those comics in general going right now. And then the big one uh, from Image is New Burn 16. That is Chip Zdarsky and Jacob Phillips. That series has come to an end. Uh, really enjoyed that series. This is the finale. So uh, definitely something that you want to check out if you've been uh, on top of it. You'll be you'll have it on your pull list. But if you haven't read New Burn, this is the title. 16 issues. Not crazy long. Two volumes. Uh, the second one will be coming out at some point, I would imagine, this year. Um, absolutely can't miss stuff. And it's kind of like... Um, what would be a good marriage of the, well, it's definitely like, like a law and order SVU kind of mm, style, especially okay. to start or just law and order in general to start. But then you have this like central figure who's like um very, like he's immensely calculated. Like he's like a, he's like a Belich He's like Belichick meets law and order. And his job is um he is like a detective for the, for the mob. So it okay. kind of keeps Ooh. them all honest. Yes. Yeah, so oh, keeps them all okay. Yeah. yeah. So some awesome stuff there. Hoping that mm. gets turned into a show or a movie at some point. But anyways, that's enough of that. TLDR, we got a mainline episode coming to you this week. Doc is doing Riddler year one. I am talking Nottingham. And yes, that is going to have some Robin Hood related stuff in there. We'll explain that more. Uh, but you, you'll be able to listen to that after you listen to this week's episode of Change My Mind. Awesome stuff. I am. Uh... Is my mic working? You're on. I don't know if your mic, you're on your mic or not. I don't know. It sounded sounded too uh, low in my head for some reason. But mm. uh, I'm ready for our main topic. It's been a while since we've done an original versus sequel reboot. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Tommy, are you ready? Wait, yeah. All right. There we go. Now let's go get them. All <laughs> right. Let's go get them. Uh, original versus reboot. Roadhouse. Uh, before we get into the rules and everything, let's let's give a tale of the tape. Let's give a little rundown. Uh, you will be having the 19 or defending the 1989 original version. So uh, what's going on with that? So the synopsis for Roadhouse, a bouncer hired to clean up the baddest honky tonk in a Missouri town armed with a black belt in karate and a PhD in philosophy. Oh, didn't know Patrick, that. Patrick Swayze sets out to tame the double deuce for its owner. Uh, the PhD. Casting... That's, I didn't know that. That's that's complete news to me. I knew he had a degree in philosophy, but a PhD. 
Yeah, he's a, he's a brain. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Um, so uh, this is directed by Rowdy Her- Harrington, which is an appropriate first name for this mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, starring, of course, Patrick Swayze as James Dalton, Kelly Lynch as Dr. Elizabeth Clay, mm-hmm. Sam Elliott as Wade Garrett. I guarantee I'll be mixing those names together throughout <laughs> this. Um, ben Gazzara as Brad Wesley, Marshall R. Teague as Jimmy, Julie Michaels as Denise, Red West as uh, Red Webster, mm. um, Sunshine Parker as Emmett, Jeff uh, Healy as Cody, Kevin Teague as uh, Frank Tilgman, Tilgman? Um, John Doe, apparently, as Pat McGun, McGurn, excuse me, Kathleen, I'm, I'm doing a great job here, <laughs> Kathleen Willot as uh, Carrie, Travis McKenna as Jack, Gary Hudson as Steve, and Terry Funk as Morgan. And then for the box office and critics reception, this made 30 million in total. Uh, it was all domestic, including 5.95 million opening. Week, it's opening weekend. Of course, this came out in 89. It's so a little different. Uh, received a 6.7 out of 10 on IMDb, 41.67 split on Roddy T's, and then uh, 4.5, 4.2 out of 5 on Google reviews with 81% of Google users liking this movie. Wes, put me out of my misery and tell the people about Roadhouse 2024. <laughs> yes, this is uh, available to watch now on Amazon Prime Video. And the synopsis is ex-UFC fighter Dalton takes a job as a bouncer at the Florida Keys Roadhouse, only to discover that this paradise is not all that it seems. Hmm. Uh, this is directed by Doug Lyman, starring Jake Gyllenhaal as Elwood Dalton. Little uh, mm-hmm. note there. Uh, Daniela Melquire, uh, Ratcatcher 2, you might know her, uh, oh. is, is Ellie. Uh, Connor McGregor is Knox. Billy Magnuson as Ben Brandt. Jessica Williams as Frankie. A uh, little similar carry over there. A little, yeah. little switcheroo. BK Cannon as Laura. Uh, Joaquin de Almeida as the sheriff. Just sheriff. Post Malone makes an appearance as Carter. Uh, Arturo Castro uh, as Mo. He offered a little bit of comic relief throughout this. Uh, hmm. J.D. Pardo as Dell. Bo Knapp as Vince. Hannah Love Lanier as Charlie, the cute uh, preteen girl there. Uh, Kevin Carroll as Steven. Bob Menery as Jack. Darren uh, Barnett as Sam. And Travis Van Winkle. It's a great name. Uh, hmm. As Dex. Mm, yeah, uh, this wasn't released in theaters. As I said, it's available to be uh, streamed on Amazon Prime Video right now, but it received a 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb and a 6357 split on Rotten Tomatoes uh, and 3.1 out of 5 on Google reviews with 86 percent of Google users liking this movie. I hate that the critics gave this a higher rating than the original I, Roadhouse. I know, I know. This is uh, there, there's something something afoot there uh, with that. But uh, for those who may be unfamiliar or just flat out forget the rules of original versus sequel, uh, it's fairly simple. Nick and I will both have uh, one minute to give our opening argument, should we so choose. Uh, and then we have about six or seven debate questions, which we'll go back and forth on. Uh, we'll each have one minute to present an argument and then 30 seconds to respond uh, to our opponent's arguments, if we so choose. Sometimes mm-hmm. we might parlay that into just one long argument for that question. Um, and then at the end, we'll have a closing uh, argument and then – when all this is said and done, I'll forget to post anything on Twitter to, for you to vote on to see who won. And I'll just keep naming the cast and crews to the end of time. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's, that's well, pretty I much think, how it works. I think everybody was reminded today why you have to be the one. Because that was, <laughs> it uh, was nice to see. I was kind of enjoying that. If uh, It, might, be, it might, might sound cruel, but. Well. I can't say I blame you. Yeah, it, it was nice. It was nice to kind of see you, just see you uh, tread water there for a little bit. Apparently, you can't tread it for very long. Yes. Maybe, maybe that's the answer to our question from a couple weeks ago. Call back to, I believe, our Aquaman episode. If I'm uh, correct. Yes, that, that's fitting, actually. That makes sense. All uh, right. So do you want to have the honor of the opening argument, or would you like to have the honor of the first question you decide, sir? Oh, you know, I feel like... It's only right to start with the original Roadhouse in the opening argument, and then I'll, I'll start off with the first question. Uh, but okay. Let me just pull up my timer here, my clock. That sounds great. I appreciate that. I uh, got my stopwatch going. Okay. Uh, you have 60 seconds on the clock for your opening arguments for 1989 Roadhouse, starting right now. 
looking at these two movies alone, obviously the first thing that jumps out is the title. And the reason why I want to start there is this movie that Wes is going to be representing today couldn't even get its own title because it it's not good enough to stand on its own on a premise. It needed to copy what Patrick Swayze did. Sure, change some things here and there. Definitely some notable alterations from the original. However, they still needed that okay. and the name of Dalton on its own to go and be able to get people interested enough into at least acknowledging this movie and whether or not they decided to go and give it a look was up to them in the end. But that alone is all I need to start off with for seconds. you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Because as you see, as you start here and we go forward, you will see fairly easily why the original is far superior. Four, to the three, two, also. one. All right. Uh, and we got this sound right there, too, if we want to, yeah. we want to use that. That's, that's still in play. Okay, good. Um, all right. Strong seconds. opening statement. Uh, not that strong, but you know. 60 seconds on the clock for you. Yeah, yeah. I did what I needed to do. 60 seconds on the clock. Let's see if you can do better. Three, two. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, people of the jury, uh, friends of all ages. You know, I'd like to thank you for, for joining us here today and, and taking part in this uh thrilling debate. But essentially, what my opponent just described in his uh 60 seconds opener. Uh, is is what a remake is, and and you know I'm not going to sit here and think that the jury is as dumb as he thinks you are. Uh, I'm not going to explain those things. What this is was a fun reboot for a new age, a new generation to enjoy, and it was a fun time. Thanks. Much like uh, the original Roadhouse, as Nick ran off uh, the uh, critics' reception of that wasn't greatly received in the beginning. This movie, although may not be uh, the original. But it has some good fruits to it. It's fun. It, it gives, uh, it holds up to the Roadhouse name, and we get a much better villain in, in Connor McGregor, and maybe a more light-hearted Dalton. Five. Yeah, you know, maybe someone who's not trying to flex his PhD the whole time. But I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. Thank you very much. Roadhouse. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we should be using. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the first question. That we have today following the open, our open argument, which is just a table setter. Um, which actor does a better job pulling off a role, the role of a bouncer? Mm -hmm. And also, on top of that, if you so choose to answer it in the course of your conversation, who would win a, in a fight? Yes. Yes, I agree. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can work that into, you know, maybe we just do 90 seconds here with no retort. I, to answer yeah. both questions. Does that sound good? Um, you, I'm, if you want to do that going in, cause you're going first. So it's like, I have the advantage of like, just going all at once. Right. So. Right. Right. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do, we'll do 90 seconds. No retort. 90 seconds. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Already right. changing the rules up. So whatever I explained at the beginning just doesn't even matter. Apparently. Well, people get it. <laughs> you know what? They understand what's going on. Despite what you, the word you want to put in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> three, two. All right. Um, let me pull up. We talked about the tale of the tape between the uh, two movies. How about the tale of the tape between the two actors? Patrick Swayze, 5'10", 160 pounds. He's played a bank robber. He's played a, played a ghost. Then we have Jake Gyllenhaal. He's six foot, 170 pounds, so has the height and weight advantage. Uh, and, and Swayze being 5'10", 160, I'm not sure if I totally buy. He seems a little bit more slimmer than me, but that's not to be debated here either way. He's a UFC fighter in this movie. He's played a military officer in other movies. He's d played a police officer, a boxer before. I can buy Jake Gyllenhaal in this role, even though he's undersized. It gets, uh, it's, it's the butt of the joke in, in the original Roadhouse. Oh, I thought you'd be bigger. So much so that they lean into it and it works. But it's still, and if you were to put this in a real life situation, there's no way a guy with long flowy hair uh, who practices Tai Chi by a lake is is spotting a boot five you know across the room there. Jake Gyllenhaal has that quiet confidence of of someone who knows he's going to kick your ass because he's a trained UFC fighter who apparently almost killed his best friend. Maybe killed his best friend. We don't really get that answer. Good so thing. it makes more sense for him to be uh, down on his luck taking a taking the role of the bouncer. Uh, uh, than than Swayze would in a, in a fight situation. Five, 
That's it. I, I rest my time. Roadhouse. There's enough rambling. All right. All right. 90 seconds on the clock. I will take it all. Uh, st- I, I might already regret this. Uh, starting three, two, one, go. So uh, the first thing that jumps out, I was blown away to find out that Jake Hall is six feet tall. I've never looked this up before. Never really cared to. Patrick Swayze finding out he's 5'10". A little less surprising just because that tends to be the case with you know actors, especially from the past. But I was stunned to learn that he was still shorter than Jake Hall because as much as he, pa- Jake Gyllenhaal has this actually has the height on him. Patrick Swayze has a far bigger presence in his movie than Jake Gyllenhaal. Thirty does. seconds. While he is a former UFC fighter, he is very much like this sad boy who's like has this quiet confidence about him. But so does Swayze. The difference between the two is that Gyllenhaal kind of has this fear of himself in this movie, and we do see that again with Swayze, but it doesn't pop up until later. And while, yes, with Hall it does become an interesting feature, fe- uh, a component of the story, it's so regret-driven and is like an odd, unhinged way about him um, that like that that where Swayze is calm, cool, collected, and you say, oh, with Tai Chi, and like he can spot these things across the room, that's his whole thing. He's very much in control. And while he does have this regret about taking a life, like Hall supposedly has as well, He's upset about it because it's not how he wants Ten to live seconds. and not how he wants to go about it. So Swayze has a bigger has a bigger uh, feel to him, even though he is smaller Three, and much more calculated two, and cerebral one. than John Hall. Roadhouse. Whew, that was close. Okay. 90 seconds. It's a lot longer than just a minute. It, it kind of sneaks up to you, yeah? It yeah. does sneak up on you. Yeah, just for so, yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm glad we did it there. Uh, although, the other thing, too, is we're, like, when we do the 30 and the 1, like, one is, like, pro your conversation and the mm-hmm. 30 is, like, anti the other. So, it's, like, easy to get all muddy when you're You're combining doing, everything here, yeah. Yes, I, I felt much more like that was I did my 30 where I was just ripping Jake Gyllenhaal apart. But. Now, five five ten. I say this as someone who was 5'11 uh, and, and some change. You know, I'm right, right between that 5'11 and 6' foot mark. I feel like, I've, I've said this before, that 5'10, 5'11 range, like no one really knows what, what a true 5'10, 5'11 is. Because you have all these 5'8, 5'9, maybe even 5'7 guys saying, oh yeah, I'm 5'10 and they're dating profiles Five, and talking to women or whatever. And yeah, I'm sure if you ask Billy D what he tells women how tall he is, he will say 5'10", 5'11". How tall do you think Billy is? Uh, not 5'10", or 5'11". So, uh, interesting. Um, I, I, I just I never thought about it. Um, but, <laughs> I, I, I... I think that might be the case with Swayze here. I think uh, it's I, easy to pass as 5'10", because it's like an ambiguous number. Yeah, uh, it's 100% fair. And then when we talk about, like, like I was saying about that era, like Tom Cruise, like, you don't... Mm-hmm. You, we all know he's short, but in plenty of roles in the past, like, it's not... It's not as like it's oh Sylvester wow. Stallone short. I want to say yeah, he might be I, too. I think Sly's short as well. But the thing is, like with with Swayze, like that that's the whole can. thing. Like you can so I I'm not questioning you. I'm questioning. I feel like I've heard he's he's. We talk about the five seven thing. I've heard he's five seven. I well, again, five ten. It's it's an ambiguous height. Everyone, no one really knows what a true five ten is. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. Anyways, um, so what uh, with Swayze, like that. Even if he's five seven, like it, he, I understand there's probably a level of casting that helps play into the, to how big he actually looks. But again, they're still making jokes about it. He has this huge presence that takes up room because of his quiet. He does. I, I'll give you that absolutely. Like they, they both have quiet confidence. There's no question about it. But there's like it's rooted differently. That yeah, my, yeah, yeah. I, I would say <laughs> that like Swayze has uh like a self-assuredness. And and not mm-hmm. to say Jalen Hall doesn't, but he's almost almost stoic where he like knows every move on the chessboard before it's being made. Yep. Jalen Hall doesn't really care about the moves being made on the chessboard because he feels like he can just punch his way through it. If that exactly. makes sense. Yes, a hundred percent. And and to to like this is where I'm going to talk about Jalen Hall. Like I don't think this was necessarily his uh, best performance that we've ever seen. No, but like, no, I no. feel like Swayze, like, is, I haven't seen everything he's in, but I feel like he's just being him where Jalen Hall's trying to be something different. Somewhere. Yeah. 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 Or, or, you, or you could, it may be a combination of some other roles that he's played, but he's not being just the character he always is. Nightcrawler, probably his best role, in my opinion. Oh, he, that was, that very was good so movie. Good. 
Yep. Uh, but we're getting off track here. Let's get to question number two. All right. All right. We're, we're throwing people off our, our, our debate here. We're agreeing too much. We can't. Have Sorry, that. everyone. Yes. Um, which character uh, is the better big bad? Brad Wesley or Ben Brandt? Love a good alliteration right there. That's nice. Yes, and I, I feel terrible that I'm going to disparage your name in some capacity, but that is my job this yeah. time around to defend Brad Wesley as the superior villain. So whenever you're ready to start the clock, let me know. All right, that's 60 seconds on the clock starts in three, two, one, go. So Bre- Ben Brandt is a weasel that nobody likes at all. Like everybody hates that dude. He's like had it, everything handed to him on a silver platter. And in some ways that makes him an easier villain to hate, to dislike. But at the same time, I don't think you can feel necessarily as passionate about that type of character, especially when he's incompetent, because that is Ben Brandt's most defining feature of all is he is big time dad's kid who seconds. has to take care of his dad's shit and is totally incapable of doing that. Whereas Brad Wesley is this monster who says Mm -hmm. he kind of came up from nothing. And then now is, you know, and and now runs the town. He is still also very much a piece of shit. Uh, Are we doing a minute on this or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. Um, He is still very much a piece of shit, but he has brains. He's you. And he isn't using all of daddy's money. He has real power, making him the superior villain. All right, I'll let you let you get to the uh, the end there and finish that. I appreciate, I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate that because I thought I, for some reason we said the little before. confusion there. That's okay, yeah. no problem. So I, this, this is me reaching out across the aisle. You know, I, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll, we'll see if I use my thirty seconds, but I do feel like I got out what I needed to. Um, okay. Do you want to go? A yeah, minute? give me the thirty second retort, and then the uh, then I'll jump in. Okay, sounds good. All right, three, two, one. Listen, I'd hate to speak ill of a of an American war hero who fought in Korea like like Brad Wesley did, but this guy's an asshole. Okay, we don't. What what's he doing in this small Missouri town? You know, just like focus on bringing the Seven Eleven, the J.C. Penney to town, and stop trying to uh, strong arm all the local businesses here, including the Double Deuce. Uh, th- this guy's a real piece of shit. He swerves on the road just because he thinks he owns it. This guy, uh, it's not. There's nothing likable about. Him. He hurts his own goons. Like th- this guy, real bad guy, Roadhouse. not in a good way. Roadhouse. Now we, <laughs> oh, sorry, no. we can go right into Ben Brandt here. If you give me a quick countdown, three, two, one. On the other hand, Ben Brandt, I think is, uh, and if we want to include his drug running father, who's kind of like the behind the scenes guy, still pulling, uh, still pulling some strings there. The the Brandt family uh, as a whole. I think presents as a more, maybe albeit modern, but better villain uh, than what Brad Wesley puts for. Because to Nick's point, he is more hateable. He is less likable. He's less worthy of that being the the son of, of the drug running father there. But he also feels a bit more unhinged. There's you know, the great scene when he gets introduced. He's on his yacht Third. and he's getting a shave, which is just really dumb on choppy waters. But you know <laughs> like something's going to happen. That he's just gonna flip out, and you know we don't know what he does to the uh, the captain, but he, he messes him up there. But you know all that stuff, like so, he's set up to be a better villain. I don't, I don't think the payoff is as good, but I still I like see. the idea of his character and who he is as a better villain than than just rich old Brad Wesley in small town. Roadhouse. Okay, I I, I will say before I get into my counter that the the, the starting it with the uh shaving was yeah. a great tone set. Yeah, yeah, I, I but to you know, I'm I'm going to argue against myself here. It doesn't pan out the rest of the way. I was about to bring that up in the counter argument. So go ahead and start the oh, 30 okay. seconds. All right, yeah. 30 seconds starts right now. Yeah, so what was we saying? Like you start out with this like maniacal crazy dude and then it's like no, he's not like crazy power hungry and just wants what he mm-hmm. wants whenever he wants it. He's just this unhinged spoiled brat to the point where the the major point I wanted 50. to make is that my my opposition had to bring in Daddy Dearest to help out Bren, Ben Brandt in his argument, and that right there in and of itself says it. Five, Brad Wesley, the four, far superior villain three, in all this, the every small two, town's worst enemy. One Roadhouse. Uh, all right. There's not many times where I I finish it and it's like that's what I wanted to say at the end. It feels really good when that happens. It does feel good. I would you know what would feel good getting invited to one of Brad Wesley's uh parties. 
those things. He throws yeah, some raiders. What, it's like it's like uh, the Playboy Mansion there. On that note, how tall is that one dude that he has? That's like that big goon who I feel like I've seen before. Yeah, he had to be like a wrestler or something like that. But you know, if everyone's uh, a Swayze five ten, then he could just be like a I, I, I don't know, like a Michael six, Jordan six four, you know, or yeah. something like that. Steph yeah. Curry six four. Ooh, is Steph Curry six four? I think he's I think he's like sneaky tall. I knew it was okay. Wow, I, I knew it was an AI small, but geez, wow, that's. Let's uh, see. Let's see before we get to the next question. That would be. Uh, oh, it's six two, six two. Okay, but still, like so that, it's, that's that's average NBA height. Yeah, but so when you watch not me when you watch a game, it's like he's a shrimp out there. It's like no, nah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my dad's height, who's a little bit taller than me. So anyway, yeah. Um, all right, so uh, we got to, for the third question: Which character is the better villain fighter? So the better number two villain, you could say, Jimmy, who is from the original Roadhouse, or Knox? Yeah, and I was debating whether we should put um, Terry Funk's character on there, but he doesn't really come back. That's another disappointing thing. He doesn't really get his like time to shine and, and actually fight Dalton, right? Did I that's, did, did I miss that's that? That's your movie? No, 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 no. Uh, in, in the original Roadhouse. Is that the guy who's the... Um, he was the, the original bouncer. The original bouncer. You, you see him pop up here and there, but he never really... Th- yeah, that's actually a really good point. How they kind of just... It's like, yeah, because like at the end, you know, when he fires him, he says, like, I'm going to beat your ass one day or some, something to that effect. Like, you're going to see me again. We, and to see him join up with Brad Wesley and like have him be the big bad would have been... I think that just would, a little bit better. That would have been better writing. We did see him. I don't know if we saw him at the end end when like it was that whole group. Part of me feels like we did, but I know when they brought in the alcohol, when we first see Wade Garrett, the, mm-hmm. that's when we first see him in town. I should say that's when we see the, the guy you're mentioning again. Um, the, the yeah. Mor- is it group. Morgan? Is that his name? Yeah. Morgan. Something like that. Okay. Terry Funk, go. former WWF wrestler. Oh, Okay, that's why you know him, and I just yeah. But I also thought that would have worked out with him and McGregor kind of being both in like the entertainment industry coming over. That would have been honestly like that's better writing if you go and make him a more significant piece and all this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he would have gotten his ass beat way worse than uh, Jimmy did, as much as. But we'll we'll, we'll get to that um, in a bit. Do you want uh, your your first one? Do you want ninety seconds or do you want sixty? No, give me give me sixty seconds. We'll keep it keep it normal uh, here on out. I think. Okay, sounds good. Three, two, one. Yeah, it, it's Knox, uh, Conor McGregor. You know, a, a UFC Irish fighter who is just coked to the gills down in Florida. Like that is a recipe for great villainry, and we get that. It's it, it's great because Knox is we got you know he's got a few screws loose. He's unhinged to use that same term, uh, and he doesn't follow societal norms. You see that from his first introduction with his coked up eyes stealing the jacket and, and just headbutting people on the street, walking around naked, sleeping with 30. other guys, uh, wives, all that stuff. He's too much of a wild card. You can't account for him. And with his given, you know, for assuming that it's, this is like someone of Conor McGregor's uh, fight expertise, then he's one tough SOB you don't want to deal with. Uh, furthermore, I guess I'll go a little bit into Jimmy. He, he feels fairly inconsequential to me here. He feels someone who kind of uh, uh, is just is just a dog on a leash waiting to get unleashed. Roadhouse. Knox doesn't have a leash. Roadhouse. Done. Done. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 30 seconds to retort starting uh, right now. Yeah. So, look, Knox is a crazy fighter and he's unhinged and everything like that. But when you're talking about what you need him to do as part of this whole this, this machination in, in trying to resolve the matter – on the Brant side of things where Dick Dad calls him in, he's a total nightmare, a total mess. And does and, and yeah, like he goes and creates problems for, for Dalton, but at the same time, he doesn't resolve the issue. You can't trust him. And he, he, he just creates Four, a larger mess and three, a larger problem. And two, it doesn't work out. One. Roadhouse. <laughs> there we go. I'm enjoying right. this way too much. With, yeah, yeah this, we might just work, see if we can work this in some way, shape, or form in future episodes. Just like with Tommy. Why not? There we go. I like that. I like that. Um, okay. So throw 60 seconds on it for me to uh, represent Jimmy. Starting right now. Jimmy is the perfect type of number two, like first mate henchman <clears throat> for you. As much as he ends up getting his throat ripped out by 
Dalton. Obviously, that is not ideal. But at the same time, you have real consequences with that character, whereas Knox kind of just does his, you know, saunter and walks off into the <laughs> distance out of the hospital like the weirdo that he is. Um, but Jimmy also has this, like, real level of control. And he is an impressive fighter in and of itself, too. He takes on three bouncers at the double deuce. He gives Wade Garrett mm-hmm. a run for his money. And it isn't until Patrick Swayze steps in. And even then, he took Pat- Patrick Swayze to the distance forcing him to move to, to do what he does not want to do in order to put a stop to him. This guy is able 15. to do it all. You can rely on him if you're a Brad Wesley in this situation. As much as he ends up biting the, the dust in the end, he is the perfect number two villain. All Done. right. We'll stop. We'll get this going here. Roadhouse. 30 seconds. There it goes. It's like, well. Where is it? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know you know where I was disappointed when, when you talked about uh, McGregor sauntering? Uh, I love that. That fits perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. With the with the swagger and, and kind of like letting his arms loose and everything. But he, he gets close to her a couple times. But I wanted him to recreate the meme. And he doesn't say it, but he gets close. And he's like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, yeah. but he, he gets close to him. He says, like, where the fuck is everyone or something like that. But he is... We were so close. I, there was a couple times I was like, "Yes, he's going to do it." He and did. It just um, never happened. He did say "notorious" at one point, which mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, okay, I appreciate mm-hmm. that little." Mm-hmm. But like your your idea would have been way better. I don't know why they didn't. do Who that. the fuck is this guy? I, yeah. I can't do an Irish accent. My my ancestors would be disappointed. Alas, well, some yeah. of them would. Some of them wouldn't. Um, That's but, true. That's uh, you got thirty seconds on the clock to uh, come at Jimmy, or I guess usually a little more time on Knox. But uh, thirty seconds, three, two, one. Yeah, you know, I'll give you. You know, Jimmy is a formidable fighter. He just feels very forgettable in all of this. I, I remember ter- for me, I remember Terry Funk much more. I remember the uh, the nephew uh, John Doe uh, bartender a little bit more. I remember Tank, the fat guy, yeah. a little bit more. He's just very forgettable to me. So, like, Knox, I won't forget from this movie, for better or for worse. Uh, but Jimmy just seems like a secondary character uh, who's really misused, as, as we were mentioning. Terry Funk should have been the guy to be the final boss. I will say, when you talk about some of the memorable stuff, like, the thing... He, he does jump out to me because of, like, the throat rip, but he also looks like Joaquin Phoenix a little bit, too. And oh. there's, there's another actor... But in the movie Old, there he's in it, and that's a terrible one to be citing that actor. But there's like the doctor in that movie. Uh, but anyways, he, he is that does an M. Night Shyamalan movie. It was terrible. That was really bad. Like it, <laughs> the premise wasn't, it wasn't the strongest premise, but the act, I, to, I told you, like that was some of the worst acting that I've ever seen. Oh, that's where they go on the island and everyone starts aging, right? There are, yeah, uh, kind, yeah, there's some of that there. Yes, you, you do get that with the kids. There's other things at play. I, I, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't waste your time watching that movie but um okay. there, it's like rufus something i can't think of his last name wayne right maybe i you, you know you could say it and i probably wouldn't know but he he's kind of like the, the um jimmy kind of looks like him but the thing that the i think the the bad that big bad that or the henchman that i remember most is probably the the boot guy just because you see him quite a bit but that's just such a like that's a fucked up thing like you know swayze's looking for it but yeah you could do some damage i mean a, a good boot to the the guts or something like just without the blade can do some damage. You can break some ribs there, you know. Yep, absolutely. And it was you get a blade between the rib cage like that. Ouch! Puncture yeah. a lung. And uh, I was thinking of Rufus Sewell. So oh, when, okay. Yeah. If you look him up, you'll you'll know who I'm talking about. You, he's in plenty of stuff. But okay, all right. Probably all the roles that Joaquin Phoenix doesn't want. But anyway, uh, that's actually not a bad career to like kind of look like someone and be, you know, g- swim in his wake, get his crumbs. Probably. Yeah, definitely. But he, he's a good actor. Like I, I'm joking. But yes, that, that would be that wouldn't be the worst <laughs> thing. I'm sure there are plenty of people that do that. Um, all right. We move on to question number four of six. Which bar is more worth saving? The double deuce, which is mm-hmm. my bar mm-hmm. or the Roadhouse? Which is Wes's bar? Yes. Um, uh, it's my turn to go first, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got sixty seconds on the clock. Better bar starts now. So the Double Deuce is like very much a place that I think you can appreciate too, Wes. I think my, my opposition would love. Is all about. He very much is a salt of the earth kind of person, and that's the vibe that you're getting 
at the double deuce. Even as they try and improve things as time goes along, you still have that character. Sure, you lose the cage at the center of it all, and maybe some of the stains that are in the floor that you know that were ingrained in there for years are gone. But still, this seconds. place has character that you can't find, you know, anywhere else in the country. This is in this is out in the Midwest. This is America. And on top of that, you have a better supporting cast of characters in this bar as well. You have Cody, the blind musician, who absolutely shreds on that guitar all mm -hmm. movie. You have Thank Carrie, you. who's that waitress that brings Dalton breakfast, and she also can sing like an angel. And then you have Ernie Bass later Ernie. on, who's played Ernie. by Keith Davis, awesome bartender. Roadhouse. Not where I wanted to end it, but I'm, uh, I made my point. <laughs> but I got 30 for later, so we're good. But uh, there, you got 30 yeah, seconds? Yeah, there you go. Yes, you want... 30 seconds, please. All right. Three, two, one. I appreciate you trying to appeal to my senses here. Uh, that almost worked on me because I do love a bar where you can just re rip heaters. You mentioned Carrie. She's waiting for a bar to br waiting at the bar to bring beers to the table. And she's just having a quick butt, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate that, but this place is dirty. It's filthy. You never know when someone's going to get a boot or a chair over the head. This is, it, it's a piece of shit bar that doesn't, you know, I love a dive bar as much uh, as any, but it needs to be, you know, somewhat cleanly. And it's not safe or clean there. Roadhouse. I uh, I, I should have brought up the whole ripping darts because there's, yeah. yeah. there's a lot of that in this movie. Swayze, especially Swayze didn't drink an ounce, but he rips a no, just coffee, leaded or unleaded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that was a, that's another little thing that was uh, carried over into all mm -hmm. this. Too, was the mm -hmm. coffee. Um, but anyways, you got sixty seconds to uh, talk about why the Roadhouse is the superior bar of the two starting in three, two, one. Yeah. I hate these like subtle kind of like subversive names of roadhouse. It's like ironic and everything, you know? So that, that aside, I'll put that aside. This is actually it's such an easy question. If we're talking about in the framework of which bar is more worth saving, this is beachfront property. The property alone is worth saving, which is why Ben Brandt wants it uh, to begin with. You're, yes, you're you're in the Florida Keys or right off the highway. It seems like kind of like a rundown, kind of slow, gossipy town. But it's still the Florida Keys, and you're still right, right. on the water there. Uh, and there can't be no docking. There's, there's So you're in like a little cove, essentially. Uh, I would, would much rather drink Rum Runners on the beach and listen to my own band that, that's uh, behind a cage there uh, than have like whiskey boiler maker shots and, and bud, bud Heavies and worry about – you know, a, a tumbleweed coming through while someone uh, makes out with my uh, wife's breasts and I, uh, doesn't have the money to pay up. Roadhouse. That's why I press the wrong button. Sorry about that. Yeah, right yeah, they, they both are applicable there. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that took a turn. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, of course I know yeah, what you're talking yeah, yeah. about. I was, I, and as I was watching it again in the movie, I was like, wait. Why does he? I'm, I remember that he flips up. I'm like, why does he flip out again? It's like, oh, it's because he didn't have the money. It's yeah, because right, right. it's because of, of the money. It's no, he's, he's doing for a quick money grab. Some real um, degenerates. What I will say for the '89 Roadhouse, the 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 female cast is just absolutely stocked, stocked to the gills. There, just a very attractive female cast all over the place. Why that many hot women are in that small town of Missouri uh, beats me. That's an interesting question. That's yeah. a fair point. They yeah. should be down in the Florida Keys at the Roadhouse. One would think. Get a but, little tan. Or maybe they, they're more salt of the earth type people. Maybe. Maybe they are. Maybe mm. they are. But you can get salt in your hair by hanging out at the beach. This is true. How about that? Uh, 30 <laughs> seconds on the clock. Uh, yeah, you didn't think about that, did you? It blew my mind. <laughs> um, starts in three, two, one. So yeah, the, the real estate is definitely uh, superior when you're talking about the roadhouse, but you also have this name that's supposed to be a wink and a nod at, at a title, and it's just not creative whatsoever. And then the interior is like, exactly. you see this at, you can find a bar like that anywhere across the country. Yes, it has the real estate advantage, but that's it. That's all it has. It's leaning on that and man. that alone. Five, and it's helpful, four, sure, but three. from a bar? It's simple Two, solo? No. One. Roadhouse. On, on a, actually, no, we're actually going to get to the... Uh, I was going to bring up something that was related to that, but kind of an offshoot, and it relates to what we're doing next. So I, I was getting ahead of myself. Apologies. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Um, uh, next question we have, uh, second to last one. Who is the better love interest, Dr. Elizabeth Clay, MD, or Ellie, who is also, also a doctor? I thought she was also a doctor, too. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't have the uh, the credentials in IMDb, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to – maybe she's just a nurse. I don't know. Oh, maybe you're right. I don't know. I just hmm. – Maybe she's like the head nurse. Like she that, might that's be- like a position, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know the, Oh, I have a cousin who has, has that role and I should know that resident resident nurse it begins uh, with an R. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, I'm you so know, well, anyway, that's, that's good research on our part. Yeah. Well, anyway, you want, it's not even DB's fault. They didn't put it there. Like if they're really true. trying to do a good job, then they should have th- those kind of details. I think most people would assume that she's just a doctor. I think, you know, us just even bring this up is good on us. Yeah, exactly. Attention to detail, even mm-hmm, though we missed mm-hmm. it was a little late. We still got there. I mean, yeah. we still have not taken care of it. So. Exactly. So we're right. better. It's, than it's on them. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now that we've sorted that out, Thank um, God. let's uh, let's go back at each other's throats here, but no rips. Um, no. Who is the better love interest, as you mentioned before, Dr. Elizabeth Clay or Ellie? You have the floor first, my friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want the full minute or do you want 90? No, no, no. Uh, 60 seconds. 60 seconds, please. 60 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one. Uh, I, I think Ellie offers some uh, unique things to this. Uh, she offers a more flirtatious verbal sparring than Doc does. So she, there's a little bit of a fight back. She's not in this initially smitten by Dalton, uh, although she's interested. She's, she's kind of hiding it, so I can appreciate uh, playing coy a little bit. Uh, unlike Doc, who is just kind of openly goes, you know, goes for Dalton right away. They kiss in, in her Jeep Wrangler. Not really fitting of a car for a doctor, uh, in my opinion, sure. however, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Huh. Uh, and then when she goes, uh, spends the night drinking uh, with Wade, uh, Wade Garrett and Dalton there, you know, uh, Wade starts getting a little handsy, starting a little flirty with Doc, yeah. who's, you know, seemingly okay with this. Uh, and then as a doctor, she goes to work the next day, still presumably still drunk after drinking the whole night and then going to a bar uh, or, or to a diner to continue drinking. So, you know, oh, Ellie seems a little bit more tame. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that safe to say? <laughs> it's more time. <laughs> um, Your minute is up, sir. <laughs> sorry, I'm still still going on here. I was, I was the, the word was right in front of me. I'm just trying to grab it, you know. I hate when that happens. Uh, 30 seconds retort starts right now. So I'm not going to talk about Dr. Elizabeth Clay just yet. I do. I want to note first, the first thing that my opposition says about his representative, his client is she's unique. I'll tell you right now, he had no idea how to represent Ellie in all this because Ellie <laughs> is definitely more my speed. And right away, chirping, hit Dalton, Elwood Dalton, right off the rip, sees past his his weird ass first name five four and she has a dirty cop dad so tough tough (laughs) representation yeah i said she offers more flirtatious verbal sparring yeah i I said uh, that's a good thing you said unique off the rip i'm seeing right through that you're like yeah she's unique yeah yeah (laughs) she's like i i maybe it's just the actress maybe it's just the way that they uh presented her in the movie but she's like sneaky hot yeah, uh, if that makes sense. Like she's like, oh, like kind of unassuming hot. You, like she doesn't like strike you right off the bat. There is, yeah, I think it's actually fair that there's like an unassuming bit, but it's also tough with her eyes, like because they like her eyes like really jump out at you. No, like, they do. And, like way. the close ups and stuff like that. I agree. Yeah, absolutely, they're, they're amazing. Yeah, it's they, they definitely like they went for the unassuming because you have her in the scrubs off the rip, but again the eyes jump mm-hmm. out, and then you went for like the nice like with the doctor, you think the girl next door kind of thing with the way she presented herself. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but anyways, I'll, um, I'll get going on uh, mine. All right. 60 seconds starts right now. Go. So yeah, Dr. Elizabeth Clay was ready to get with Dalton a little, maybe a little faster than uh, you might expect given his, uh, his background, his nature and everything. But at the same time, she's an understanding woman. She doesn't judge a book by its cover. And then she tries to keep him honest later on. And then even when she sees him at his absolute worst, she is able to move past that because she understands that Dalton didn't want to do what he had to do. He was only doing it out of necessity. And then when it came to what happened to Wade at the end, where he unfortunately meets an untimely end, 
we see Dalton push to the brink, but then still he is hearing Elizabeth Clay in, I don't want to go after, I don't want to take out this final guy because then he's winning and then I am no better than him in Brad Wesley. Um, so she has a profound impact on them and sees and sees that and recognizes it and stays with Five, him till the, four, at the end of the movie. Three. Done. Two. Done. Oh, gosh. Oh, I I see. I got it there. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Thirty seconds on the clock for you, sir. Uh, uh, to retort. Three, two, one. Yeah, I, I, you know, to address the dirty cop allegations against Ellie here. Uh, you know, I I don't find that very fair. What is she supposed to do? He's not in her life. You know, she she got a she got out of that. You know, so she you can't. Yeah, you know, I can't blame you if if you're you know the son of Hitler. You know what are you gonna you have no control of that. Like that's just like unfortunate circumstances. You know, so she's doing her best to still actually help her, uh, not only her piece of shit father, but also also Dalton, and she's screwing over her ex boyfriend by stealing the the boat all the time. You know, so that's, that's good stuff. Okay, that I forgot about the the, the ex boyfriend stuff. God, what a cuck, huh? That's that's t- actually just get, you got it for two hours. Don't put a scratch. I, I actually love this line. He's like, "Don't get a scratch on it." And then Dalton's yeah. like, "It's in the water. How am I going to scratch it?" Yeah, that guy was uh, was a tough look for that dude. That's for damn sure. Well, he only pops up like one other time, right? It's like when Ellie's calling the cops to like get more yep. people, right? To get more squad cars there, and he's like, "I'm mm-hmm. sending everyone we can." Mm-hmm. That's right. I, I forgot about that. He, I, I'll tell you what, he didn't have much of an impact on me. No, movie. no, but you no know return. what? The the presence, the presence of the police force in uh, uh, the Florida Keys, the Glass Key, to be more specific, is way more prominent than the any cops that show up in uh, uh, the Double Deuce Town. Uh, call me crazy. We don't see any. Co- Maybe we see cops when Red's place burns down, but it's like you. It's more like firefighters. It's mostly firefighters, I think. Yeah. And then it isn't until the very end when Brad Wesley dies mm-hmm. that we see the cops. Like we see the sheriff and like his two like deputies right on him or something like that. That's it. And Brad Wesley would definitely have those cops in his back oh. pocket. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think they addressed it in the movie at some point. Yeah. But, Maybe that's yeah. why we don't see them. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. oh, I thought, yeah, no, a hundred percent. That that's definitely why we don't see them at all. I this. thought this was just a lawless town and you know, like a, like a good old Western. I mean, it's lawless in this, in, in a sense, because you don't have, because it's, they're bought out. Mm-hmm. But what I will tell you, uh, what I didn't like about the, the updated uh, roadhouse is the, on the nose uh, description of calling this a Western between like the relationship with uh, mm. the little girl at the bookstore and Dalton. She's like, ama- like you're a roamer coming into the town to fix a problem. They're just going to keep going on. You're like this Western guy. Like mm. that's exactly what roadhouse was supposed to be. But here, you know, it feels like this new age of audience is so dumb. Let me just come out right and say it. <laughs> wow. It's like all right. You're not works. you're not wrong, and uh, I didn't like it either. Uh, and that yeah. kind of, that kind of does it, but that also plays into um, what uh, the the last point that we're going to be debating mm-hmm, here, mm-hmm. which has a better story. Um, and I have uh, actually, you know, let's start this. Let's end this how we started it. I'm going to do the full ninety seconds because uh, you, you kind of got my juices flowing. You right? Oh uh, man, yeah, yeah. Okay, I shouldn't give you the assist there. Uh, starting in three, two, one, go. Yeah. So they, they talk about how it turns into, uh, how it is, uh, it's a mystery. I mean, I'm sorry, a Western off the rip. They let you know. And then they add the other layer a little bit later on. I believe it was a mystery if I'm not mistaken, but it really like it's there, but it's kind of like, it's not a mystery. Um, it, something is a, a foot, but that's it. But that this, the, the remake of roadhouse is like, just a generic Western. Yeah. Set in the Florida keys, but that's really it. We do have a love story in there, but when you look at the original roadhouse, I was blown away rewatching it because it's like, you have this, first of all, you have this whole like underground community when it comes to bouncers where like Dalton is this big deal. Sam Elliott's Garrett, like Wade Garrett is like, is another big deal. 45 seconds. You have the throat rip lore with him as well. Like this is like its own little world. And, this is like you come into this place and it's a mess. That is why we're seeing Dalton being brought in. Whereas in this, the reboot is just seconds. like, 
you're trying to like like you said, it's a western. You're trying to save the town. This is your yes, maybe it's a, another layer to the western, but it's like you're trying to clean up this one thing, and then you run into this larger issue that's at hand. It's layered in in both in terms of the plot itself. And then in terms of the characters that we get, because then you have the Dalton connection to the blind musician. And I, I think that uh, while neither is perfect from a writing standpoint, there's so much more going on Three, with the original Roadhouse's two, story. One. Roadhouse. Very pleased with that. There All right. All right. Let's see if you can feel the same way after our 90 seconds talking about why the reboot of Roadhouse is the better story. Uh, 90 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one. Yeah, the, the one of the things I find so ridiculous about the original Roadhouse is the fact that everyone knows Dalton's name, as if there's almost like some uh, bouncer bar quarterly that comes around, like in, in like the same spirit of Sports Illustrated. Instead of like faces in the crowd, you have like bouncer of the month, bartender of the month, hot new waitress of the week, you know, whatever the case is. Like you, you can read about everyone across America there. So like in 1989. There's no social media. There's no way that anyone would know Dalton's name from state to state, whether he was coming from Memphis. We don't really know where he's coming from, uh, from his previous job in relation to where the double deuce is either. So uh, that's kind of, you know, a little bit of a problem there, but nevertheless, both stories are completely stupid. I don't, I'm not sure if there really is a better story. This is a story about a bouncer who is essentially like a front of the house manager. Like he's way more uh, than a bouncer. He's there to, uh, find all the people stealing money from the counter or helping people, uh, you know, 30 seconds left buy into themselves a little bit more. Like both, both stories are really stupid. I think this one that came out in 2024, uh, is just an updated version of that, you know, and it's, it, it's a copy of a copy at, you know, a, a copy of an original. That's never going to be, it's, it's a tough shoe to fill. Uh, but I think it did a lot of things right in honoring the spirit of, uh, Roadhouse while not Five. essentially duplicating it. Roadhouse. It. Yeah. You know, it's uh, as you were going through that, you reminded me, I think you brought up, uh, what is it? Dalton's like in the, in the original, his, like his previous job. It's yeah. like, he's, he's like, Hey, I'm leaving. Like I'm done. Like he just quits like that. And it's like, oh, okay, fine. Like no big deal. Just, yeah, you know, he's, right. the, bo- the boss is like, you know, Oh, that sucks. And then you move on. No, well, nothing else. I, I understand he's the best of the best, but I imagine in that line of work that happens fairly normally. I'm not sure if people give their two weeks. You know, you get you suffer a bad beat. You're like, uh, I'm out of this. You that's know? fair. That that is a fair point. Yeah, and Dalton was before, uh, right before Garrett, you know, died. He was mm-hmm. about to leave with him. So now, my my question is, uh, who was the better contract negotiator? Uh, uh, Swayze's Dalton or or Gyllenhaal's Dalton uh, for, for financial payment, fi- financial reimbursement. Wait, Swayze, because he actually like said, "This is what I get, and this is what you're doing." And then uh, with oh, I will. So Gyllenhaal didn't do shit with Frankie, like in terms of negotiating. He like just waited her out, but yeah. he did have a pretty good racket going with those underground fighting. He uh, did, didn't? Yeah. I just had to show up there. Yeah, that was. Pretty and, freaking smart. And my real, like, I'm really upset about this. Like, I wanted to know what happened with the buddy. And, like, did he get kicked out? Like, they, they spent so much time with the UFC, you know? Or did, did he just stop fighting? I mean, it seems like it. I, I was under the impression that he, he killed the guy. Like, that's yeah. what I, I thought. Because he's like, or, he, I, but you could argue, or did he paralyze him? Like, because it could be that, too. Very easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I would just, I would just wanted a little bit of clarity. There, there was some ambiguity there that they didn't necessarily have to be ambiguous about. You can just give us the answer there. Um, yeah. They didn't, they didn't necessarily. But yeah, 500 bucks, right? 5,000 up front, which is 500 got. bucks a week until the job is done in 1989. Uh, 500 a night. 500 a night. Uh, yep. excuse me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even more so. And I think, I think with, um oh uh, you know what what was it he i think joan hall got five thousand a week so he was yeah getting it was 20 like 20k, 20K for a month. i think i think they said it was like about a month's work so he was 20k for a month and then if swayze was and i'm assuming swayze didn't take any days off he's definitely a belichick kind of guy uh, so yeah if, i agree and there's no, not much else to do in that town anyway so he's getting three thousand five hundred um a week so if he's there he was there for more than a month though but Three thousand five hundred in eighty nine a week yeah. versus five thousand a week in twenty twenty four. I think the three thousand five hundred is better. 
Yeah, and you're getting the five thousand off the off the rip. Yeah, paid in cash off the books. You know, like you you know Dalton uh, Swayze's Dalton is not like registering on the IRS or anything. Like he doesn't have a house. He doesn't. No, have, you know, he has a car, I guess. But you know, like yeah, he, he's kind of off the radar. Right, but he's smart. He's clearly like smart with his money. I mean, he also like uh, well, Jillian Hall does get like a free place to stay with that boat, but mm-hmm. Swayze's staying at like a hundred a month for his place. Months, no AC, no TV. You know, yeah, yeah. But he that's how he likes it though. I, mm-hmm. I'm sure. I, it, does he, he doesn't have a shower probably there either. So you know, yeah, you can just just, just go in the river. Exactly. Yeah, he's some fine. people are pond people. You know. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, nice, but final uh, closing arguments. Yes, you have the uh, the honors of this one uh, after okay. I let things off. So uh, 45, I believe, is what yeah, we Yeah, that on. feels good, 45, yeah. Yep, 45 seconds on the clock, uh, beginning in three, two, one. The 2024 Roadhouse uh, starring Jake Gyllenhaal is, listen, it's not, it's not better than the original. I, I'm not going to come out here and say it, but it does a lot of things right. And I may have just sunk my pseudo argument here but this is an enjoyable movie it's a, it's I, I think a better than average reboot um you know with some slight updates you know you get a better uh better villain fighter and in, in, uh and in Knox there you get a better location better bar worth fighting for and defending in my opinion at the roadhouse mm-hmm. uh and, and a better better location in general you know the, the glass keys that's a, you can find worse places to live there but all in all I thought Jillen Hall was pretty I've- good. Uh, didn't entirely replicate Swayze, but he he did a good job. Roadhouse. Okay. Yeah, you win. <laughs> Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> I was actually about to extend an olive branch when I began my thing. <laughs> so go ahead and start the clock. Uh, starting right now. I would like to remind everybody that the the whole point of these conversations is not which movie is better than the others. That's what Wes and I are arguing. But we mm-hmm. hope that you, the people will vote on who presented the better argument, who is the better attorney. Yes, I had the easier argument in all this, and I think that's why – I still think that's why I should end up winning because it was handed to me on a silver platter. But I don't want that – my, my uh, opponent's art comment before seconds. we may have sunk himself. <laughs> I, I hope that you guys strike that from the record and realize it's about everything else that was said before. The closing and opening arguments – are just to set the table and finish things 10 off. seconds. Um, speaking of finish things off, uh, Ooh. got nothing. No, there's nothing better than Three, a good throat rip. And that's two, what we get in this, my movie one roadhouse. I, I waste the whole time doing the olive branch, but <laughs> I know why well, that, that was nice. I, I, I accept your olive branch there. So that's it. Um, roadhouse, uh, 2024. That that's the original versus sequel reboot uh, debate that we are doing here. So, Quick scores, though. We'll have to jot this down when we do our year in review thing. So, Roadhouse 2024, give it a score for me. Uh, okay, we definitely need to do this in the future. Uh, I'll give it like Dylan Hall. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it this because he's shredded. I'll give it a sixty-nine. A sixty-nine. He is shredded. He is, he is shredded. shredded. Yep. Uh, I will give this. Uh, as I'm typing this in right now. 79, 80. Wow. 79, 79 okay. out of a hundred. I give the, I would give the original something in the eighties, like an 80s. Yeah. Yeah. 85. Sure. It's like, an enjoyable movie, but you know, yeah. not all 85s are made, made equal. You, you, you know, know what I mean? It's like talked about that many a yeah. time, like when we're, especially when it comes to like MCU stuff. But I, I, I do want to say too, we didn't get to, like I mentioned Wade Garrett in passing and all this didn't really fit into our conversation. I will say like, I wish they had that character in this. Like, you, you can't. Right, like, yeah. It, it's kind of hard the way they wrote it. You can't really have that. But that really is one of my favorite things about the original Roadhouse. Like, I know the joking that's there with, like, the doctor and everything. And that is, like, odd. But I kind of, like, these two characters are just, like, vagabonds. They just, they're mm-hmm. out on the road and doing their own thing and whatever. I, I like that. So, I just, that was something I wish we had. But, you know, whatever. Just wanted to note that. Uh, well, I, I would be, believe Sam Elliott as a bouncer. He's 6'2". He's maybe a little too skinny overall for the role, especially in that in that point of his life. But he was in the uh, California Air National Guard. So, you know, oh. he's, got a, he's got a little bit of uh, military experience for him. He's a badass, man. He mm-hmm. really is. And uh, I, I love him in this role. So, um, yeah, 
And it, but I, I, I'm glad you feel similarly. But anyways, uh, that does it for the Roadhouse original versus reboot. Yes, sir. Now it's time to check your tickets at the station because the train is leaving. The Discharge Depot right now. <laughs> Choo-choo, bitches. X-Men 97, first two episodes out, Nick. Uh, this was on both of the things that we've watched this weekend. Uh, w- w- what do you think? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Really good start, really strong start. Um, so I, I went into it just like, you know, we're just cautiously optimistic. Obviously, there's like some odd news that comes out right before where you get mm. like it's the, the writer or whatever that guy's role was gets removed. Executive so producer, head writer, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. It's like, oh boy, are we are we in for some serious trouble? But it seems like it was unrelated to what was going on um, mm-hmm. with X-Men 97. And uh, because you know, the first two episodes, it was just like, how, how could you not be more excited about it? And people are like, just the, it is very much took it took over the conversation throughout the week on Twitter, which is what I, I was, you know, I, I wasn't expecting uh, at all because it's animated, but I, I absolutely, it just goes to show how strong that animated show was and how strong a good animated show can mm-hmm. be over the course of time. And then they step right back into it and they absolutely did not miss. I love what they did with, um, with, with Gambit, with Rogue, Magneto, like the, those are my, in Wolverine, those are my three favorite characters, but I got to say, Wes, your guy Cyclops absolutely knocked my socks off. I've yeah, never I've, seen him utilized better in a show or movie. He's he was really good in this. I, I'll say the animation is cool as well because like it's you know kind of poking fun at, at some of like the stiffness or the wonkiness of the early '90s cartoons, uh, but with an updated format. So it's like it's supposed to be kind of cheesy and kind mm-hmm. of like '90s s, but it but it works. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought that was really good. Love Cyclops in this. I'm very interested to see what what goes on with this Jean Grey storyline, as well as this Magneto and Rogue uh, Gambit love tryst triangle thing that they got going on. What's happening there? Um, You know, apparently, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. They've kind of alluded to Mr. Sinister playing a role uh, this season. So I'm excited to see him kind of get into the fold and how that works out. It is out there, like it's like it's like that is part of their promotional thing. So I, you're not it just they showed him it. a couple times. I forget where it was, but it, it was in, like you could see the uh, uh, the red diamond uh, in some place. It's in the intro. Um, it, yeah, I, I know. I know of one in one spot. Is one spot's morph, which obviously it was big for him in the mm-hmm. original cartoon. I feel like it was somewhere else, but um, I, I will say I do have I do know in some capacity how it's going to come into the mix. Is if you just. If you read the comics, you guys will know, and and I, I don't want to spoil things for people, but um, yeah, but yeah. So if you don't if you read the comics, you, you'll you'll know. But it's uh, yeah, I, it's a very very promising story. Yeah, with the animation too, it was, I was like, I was going into it, was like, okay, like you're you're definitely going for this old old feel, but it's like updated. And I was like, I, I'm not sh- I'm just not sure. Like I don't know. But once we saw that trailer of the fight sequence against the Sentinels, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, we're all set. And then like I said, like the. Like this, the rogue fighting was really cool there. Like seeing what she did, and obviously the gambit. Um, like I forget, I saw somebody come up with a nickname for like the gambit Wolverine team where he charges his claws. That was awesome, but nothing was better than what they did with with Cyclops. Like his first fight when they're saving Sunspot, and then when he's coming out of the plane and using his like blast. Yep. That stuff was like seriously that like you only see that in like the video games I feel like or, or the comics of course but it's awesome. no it was it was cool and it, it showed his leadership he gets a bad rap you know uh, in, in the real movies for being a little bit of a stiff you know uh, maybe being too much of like a preppy good goody two shoes this was kind of like a like I, I may be preppy but I'm still badass type of Cyclops there agreed a hundred percent like he backed it up. Where mm-hmm. you don't see that as much, especially with the, the James Marsden version, they definitely like made him just more whiny. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. uh, Cyclops is uh, is about to go through the ringer. I'll tell you that right now. Like, uh, oh boy. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's two Jean Greys. Well, just yeah. It was just it's, we'll leave it. At, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Uh, but yeah, very strong start for X Men '97. We will be trying to mix in some X Men stuff over the course of the season too, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I was happy that they showed Morph answering the door uh, in that final scene there of episode two, when, when Jean Grey is revealed, because it just removes the possibility that he was just pretending to be Jean Grey and got pregnant through Cyclops. Yeah. This, imagine if that was just one big prank this oh. whole time that Morph was just like, ah, I'm playing a gag on you. I'm not really Jean Grey. Yeah. That would be a, uh... That would be uh, now, how would that work with his powers? Now, if he formed into a woman, does he still have male organs? 
they've done that with Mystique, where she had like became a man and had the male. Oh, so I, so okay. I, so it I'm, might be a little easier to recreate um, the male appendage uh, in comparison to like having a baby form in your belly. Yeah. How how strong well, are the powers? That's what I wanted. Well, yeah, I don't I don't know how strong hers are versus like Morse, but like she's able to like father Mystique is able to father a child, S- sire a child. Yes, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. That's that's a good some good food for thought. I'll think about that uh, before I go to bed. There you go. There, there you go. Um, but also on, on my end too, um, just a big big week for like animated stuff. We got Invincible season two back a short bit ago. Uh, the misses and I are are caught up on that crazy action. Um, definitely seeing some things that I've I've seen in the comics. Very exciting. Like just but all out bananas. Um, and then. The return of Has Been Hotel, which is on um, which is on Amazon Prime, like Invincible is, uh, second half of season one. Mm. And and while Invincible's pause was frustrating, with the Has Been Hotel, it's a little bit different. It that's more like it started on YouTube, kind of came out of nowhere, got mm. picked up, turned in, has turned into this this show on um, on Amazon. I really enjoyed it. And honestly, before we convened, I was like ripping the uh, three of the four episodes. I got, I only got the season finale left. So I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a musical. So it's kind of, and I didn't know it was when I first oh, started okay. it, but it's like a, it's a heaven and hell thing. And you know, I like that backdrop a ton. Sure. So uh, you throw that in the mix and like the musical is like, it's got some funny bits. Um, so I've, uh, I've very much enjoyed um, the has been hotel. All right. And uh, as for next week, we have a bit of a free play here, actually. Yeah, well, we talked about doing X Men stuff, so why don't we just put it as we're going to do something X Men related, and okay. you and I can hash this out off air. All right, that sounds good to me. Uh, but as always, it'll be same bad time, same bad place as always. <clears throat>